Okay, I've got a uh, Samsung uh, set here. This is an LE40A457. It's a Samsung LCD TV, only a 720p one, but still okay. Uh, and it comes with a BN44 00197A power supply, which is also found in most of the A series 40 and 46 inch LCD TVs. Um, this power supply uh, has a very common fault in it, and it uh, has bad capacitors, as you will probably be able to see there. The caps have popped their top. The symptom of this failure is a failure to exit the standby mode. You can see the power light is lit. I can try and turn on the TV, but the TV does not respond. Um, in some cases, the TV will do what's called boot looping, where it will make its melody sound, but it will fail to proceed. It will make the sound and it will crash, make the sound and crash. Or on some of the bigger 1080p ones, which have a fan in them for cooling the processor, the fan will spin up, slow down, spin up, slow down. Sometimes you'll be able to see the power light pulsate slightly. Sometimes it will blink on and off. There are a variety of symptoms, and they're all caused by these popped capacitors. Now, um, you can, of course, diagnose these power supplies just by looking at the capacitors, but that's not always a foolproof method because sometimes the capacitors can fail without it being obvious. Uh, they, they can sometimes fail to bloat. Um, I've had that happen before to me, not on a Samsung power board, but on other power boards. So, uh, my favourite test is to check the output voltages. So, there's a little legend here. You should be able to see it. Make sure you can see the meter. Okay. A little uh, legend in the uh, bottom, below the uh, power supply connector. And it has the rail voltages right on it. It says pins 19, 21, 22 are the 13 volt. Now uh, there's a pin number 24 and 23 there, so you just kind of go from there. So it's 23, 21, and this is a uh, 19 here. And as you can see, the 13 volt rail is pulsating about to about six volts. It's not going any further. And I can also hear a slight chirping from the power supply. It's probably not going to come out on the uh, camera, but. Uh, there's a little chirping, the power supply light is uh, the little standby light is blinking slightly, only faintly. Um, there's also a 5.3 volt rail here, uh, that's on pins 13 through to 16, so I'll just check uh, pin 15 here, that's 17, that's 15. Yeah, that's the uh, 5.3 watt rail there. Again, it's pulsating. And that basically tells me the power supply is under a bit of distress. It's not able to start up. Or once loads applied to it, it's collapsing. Now, one of the other things you can do is you could use an oscilloscope like this. Um, you don't need one this advanced, but it does help. Uh, and you can check what the rails are actually doing on a scope and to do that you want to clip your ground lead to the chassis somewhere and then put the probe in on these exposed pins just leave it there and then uh, if you can you want to set your scope to a roll mode if you can't you just have to rely on a slower time base and if it's a CRT scope that may be a bit tricky but uh, you can still make it work well enough. So what we can see from this waveform is basically the power supply is attempting to power up, but as various loads on the main AV board switch on, uh, the output voltage collapses progressively until the main board basically resets. Oh, and here's something interesting. It now appears that the power supply ha has uh, started, we can hit a, uh, but then it's given up. So um, the alpha voltage on one instance didn't quite drop low enough to reset it immediately. So it's trying, it's trying, it's trying, and it's given up. And it's going to repeat this cycle many times until the capacitors warm up sufficiently that their ESR figure drops. Now, ESR is a property of a capacitor. It's really undesired. But every electrolytic capacitor, which is these little can things, um, every electrolytic capacitor has ESR. 
and when these capacitors fail the ESR figure increases massively uh, and when the ESR increases the power supply is no longer able to regulate its outputs properly and so we get this kind of unstable output voltage you can see it's varying quite a lot this isn't very good the uh, main board usually can't work with this unstable output uh, various things happen, the various uh, supply voltages on the main board start collapsing and causing the processor to reset or causing, in, in the case of Samsung, they actually have a detection circuit uh, they can detect the power supply output is bad if it's bad they reboot like this they, they have a watchdog circuit um, one of the ways you can speed this up yeah, let's just unplug it there you see it tried a few times then when it was unplugged. You can get a hairdryer. It's not only household hairdryer, like this. And you can uh, use it to heat up the power supply. So, um, while I'll be focusing on the capacitors, I'll just show what the scope does as I heat up this uh, power supply. And you can see uh, they will stabilize. Okay, look at that. Just check it's still doing the same thing. Okay, yeah. That was sufficient, and let's move to C. Uh, the LCD panel backlight is on there. Basically just look at these holes here. See it's glowing. And you can see the output is uh, stable. Well, not that stable really. I'll just uh, set my scope to AC coupling. And a low voltage scale. And what we can see, let's take it off roll mode is uh, the output ripple on that power supply is in excess of half a volt peak to peak and uh, it might not come out on the video but it's a very loud hissing coming from the power supply uh, which is a result of this unstable switching basically when the output capacitors go bad it causes the control circuit to become unstable because it's not regulating the output properly um, it makes the transformer switch at a um, it's not switching at constant frequency like it should do. Uh, this causes a hissing sound to be emitted from the transformer. If it was switching at the constant frequency, it would be out of human hearing range. Basically, it would be something like 60 kilohertz. But as it's uh, switching at variable frequency, you can actually hear the subharmonics created by this switching. Um, if you've got good ears, if you're young like me, as you get older, it becomes harder to hear those things. Treat your ears well, they can be very useful. One of the odd effects that this causes is uh, it's actually very odd. The people that bought this off, they, they gave me this uh, remote with the TV and they said um, that the remote doesn't work anymore. But I'll just point at the camera there, as you can clearly see, the remote is working. The TV doesn't respond though. There's no response at all. And I tried another Samsung remote. Uh, well, I tried a universal remote program with the Samsung code. That didn't work. And then I tried it on my Samsung TV here, and it did work. So I thought that was a bit odd. What I did eventually is I happened to have a uh, an identical board, as you can see here. It's uh, from this other Samsung I'm working on, just having to use the same power supply. Now, I actually recapped this power supply quite a few years ago. You might remember my video from that. And, yeah, exactly the same capacitor's fault. And uh, I put this board in the set, and it worked perfectly. The remote worked perfectly. So what I went and did is I tried to figure out why that, uh, that remote wasn't working on this set with that power supply in. And it is related to that ripple, basically. Just clip my uh, scope probe ground down here. What I'll do, this requires about five hands, but... You can see, this is the supply rail for the infrared sensor. 
And what you might be able to see, now here's an interesting coincidence. Uh, it might not be that visible on this screen, but you have to take my word for it. That there says 38 or 39 kilohertz. Now that is a pure coincidence. There's nothing... It just happens that when this power supply malfunctions, it's got these harmonics at this frequency. It's actually jumped up a little to about 48 now, but it will vary as the power supply warms up. But that's actually within the sensitivity range of the sensor. A little infrared sensor there. The sensitivity range of that is typically something like 30 to 60 kilohertz. So what the sensor is basically doing is it's picking up the outside interference and it's ignoring it. It's filtering it out because it's quite a good sensor. It's saying it's gain up, which means fundamentally it's not going to uh, not going to output any signal because it can't receive anything over that noise. Now that's not infrared light. That's just power supply noise. But it's got a little sensitive phototransistor in it. And this transistor uh, basically varies its uh, conducting, conduction current of light. Um, and if there's power supply ripple, then that will couple into that circuit. So, what you can do to prove this theory is you could just uh, turn the scope up a little, stick it on the signal pin. Now, you have to determine this by deduction, but you can try all of them. Basically, just point the remote at it, and as you can see, well, you have to take my word for us here, but I'm pressing buttons, but there's nothing on there. Just a little bit of noise. Nothing. Oh, and it just picks up a pulse there. Yeah, we're really close to the sensor, like right on it. Oh, not even there. No. Yeah, well, it got a few pulses then, but basically it needs to receive a, a pulse train, uh, a load of pulses which encodes uh, the TV, the TV's identifier, in this case it will encode that it's a Samsung remote, uh, and it wants to control the Samsung TV, and that I press the 1 button for example. So that's interesting, I would have honestly not expected that, but it kind of makes sense when you think about it, that um ripple on these power supplies can cause serious problems. The oddest thing is, this TV is otherwise working perfectly, apart from the hissing sound from that power supply. Uh, the, the, all the functions work fine, picture's perfect in this state. So the uh, previous owners basically just ran this thing until it stopped and they kept running it after that. They, uh, they I think they said like a couple. They, they, they like wait 10 or 20 minutes for it to turn on at one point, so yeah, they were really running it until the end. It can cause some interesting symptoms when you do that. Uh, it can also cause problems for the uh, for the TV. It can corrupt the EEPROM on the uh, main board assembly. It's easy enough to reset on these. You just put a jumper across it while you power it up, but it can make it a bit more um, involved of a fix. Luckily I don't have to do that in this one. Uh, and uh, the TV has 23,000 hours of usage on it, so it's been very well used. I think it's the second highest usage I've, fi I've seen. I've seen one with 25,000, a little 32-inch LCD. So, I um, mean, for a six-year-old TV, 23-odd thousand hours, you work that out, it's almost 3,000 hours a year. So, I mean, yeah, it's got bad capacitors, but I suppose it has done fairly well. I mean, the, cap the capacitors shouldn't fail. I mean, a normal operation capacitors just shouldn't fail like that in such a catastrophic manner. The fact that they've, I mean, these are two banks, so you've got a 16 volt set and a 10 volt set. Oh, they're very hot. Uh, the 16 volt sets for the 13 volt rail and the 10 volt sets for the 5.3 volt rail. And the fact that they failed independently does kind of point to a design flaw. I mean, if these just failed on their own, but these didn't pop, I'd say maybe it's a. Uh, a problem with the power supply, do too much ripple current in those capacitors, but the fact that they failed independently probably indicates that the capacitors themselves are pretty rubbish. And you know, I've done exactly the same repair on this board before, so a couple of years back, so you know, I know it's a common fault with this model. It's more common the older models, uh, older Samsung's and 2007 models. It still happens with these 
2008 models. Pretty much 2009, I think, is immune to it. I don't think I've seen a single model. I think Samsung fixed that issue after that. Anyway, enough babbling. That's an interesting fault. Uh, can catch you out. You could think that maybe the remote's bad, or maybe the the sensor's bad, or the TV main board's bad. But no, it, it really, uh, the power supply can have a lot more effects on a TV than you would otherwise expect. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you've got a TV with bad capacitors and it starts doing weird shit, place the capacitors. You, you never know what the uh, what that ripple can do. I mean. One of the things it could cause is like the analog uh, analog video sources to have noise on them, or it could cause the freeview tuner to malfunction. It could cause the audio to have a buzzing sound on it or a hissing sound on it. Yeah, it can cause a variety of symptoms. In this case, of course, the infrared sensor is not working. It can also just plain stop the TV from functioning if it gets a strong enough ripple. Though in that case, it's actually usually the power supply output collapsing under load or the main board resetting but it can still cause this problem anyway I hope this helps save some more TVs from the dumpster <laughs>